The uh, purpose of this tutorial is to go over in detail the solutions to this uh, uh, MHF4U uh, advanced functions uh, polynomials and rational functions uh, test review. And we'll start with uh, part one. There's uh, several multiple choice here. The first one says the blank row of differences for cubic functions are all the same. And the answer would be three. Uh, every time you add another degree to a polynomial function, that row is the one that should be all the same. And we'll take a look at that in some examples where um, you have to take a table of values uh, later on in the review and find what polynomial, whether it's quadratic or cubic or linear or whatever, uh, fits that set of data. So basically the degree and the, the, the row or column of differences are same are the same thing. So cubic third degree, quartic fourth degree, uh, quadratic is a second degree, so it would be the second. For number two, even functions have which of the following characteristics. And uh, this is the characteristic of an even function. When you replace x with negative x, you get the same function. So f of negative x equals f of x. This is actually what an odd would be. f of negative x is the negative of the original function. That would be odd. So we're looking for even, so a is the correct answer for two. For number three, it says describe the transformations for this function. And uh, D is the correct answer here. There's a vertical stretch of 3. That's the 3 right here. The negative means that uh, there's a reflection in the x-axis. The 1 half means it's a horizontal stretch. If that was a 2, it would be a compression, but a horizontal stretch of factor 2. The, there's a horizontal translation or shift 5 units to the left, and that's the uh, x plus 5. Uh, remember, it's always the opposite, so it's actually x minus whichever way it shifts, so that's why it's the opposite sign. And the plus 6 in the end is a vertical translation of 6 units up. All the rest of these are kind of similar, but uh, there's something a little bit uh, off. For example, this one says it's a horizontal stretch of factor 2 when, when uh, actually that one is right. Oh yes, the uh, right and left uh, is uh, switched here between A and D. So D is the correct answer for number three. What is domain, the domain of this function? Uh, the domain is the entire set of real numbers, but there's two restrictions because there's two different factors in the denominator. And negative five is a number that would make this factor have a value of zero. And so if uh, we're dividing by zero, it's undefined. And so the same with three here. So three and negative five, which are these two. So it's the entire set of real numbers such that x cannot equal negative five or three. So A is the correct answer for number four. For number five, which of the following is not a rational function? Well, nine over two x plus five is. Uh, five x to the negative one could be written as uh, five over x. That's what the power of negative one means. So that would be a rational function because we're writing it as, um, um, well, it's a constant, actually, the 5, over x. Uh, polynomials do not have uh, negative exponents. So that, although it kind of looks like a polynomial, the negative exponent is what gives it away and makes it rational and not a polynomial. C is the correct answer here. Uh, C is just a, um, a polynomial. So it's, a, it's a trinomial, a, a quadratic, negative 6x squared plus x minus 2. So that's the non-rational function. Uh, D is, uh, it's, uh, we have a polynomial over another polynomial, so that's definitely a rational function. For number six, uh, what is or are the horizontal asymptotes for this? And to find the horizontal asymptotes, uh, notice that the, uh, the power of x in the numerator, the 8x squared, is the same degree as if we were to expand out the uh, two binomials in the denominator. So if we multiply 2x by x, that would be a 2x squared in the denominator. So if you take the ratio of, of 8x squared in the top over the 2x squared in the denominator, that works out to be 4, so y equals 4 would be the horizontal asymptote. So that's how you find a horizontal asymptote for rational function when the uh, degree of the dominant terms on the top and bottom are the same. For number seven, uh, rational functions can never cross A, and there's uh, different uh, names of, of asymptotes listed here. Um, it can cross an oblique asymptote, and it can cross a horizontal. Now, slant is kind of a slang term for oblique. Slant, oblique would be the same thing. Can't cross a vertical asymptote. C is the correct answer here, because what a vertical asymptote represents is a place where the graph is undefined. And so 
it wouldn't make sense for the graph to be able to be at a place where it's undefined. So that's why C is the correct answer. So it actually is, it is possible to cross, for example, a horizontal, because all a horizontal represents is how the function behaves for very large values of x. That's, it's not an undefined place like the vertical asymptote is. Uh, and it is possible to cross them as well. Uh, to, to show you what that looks like, so let's say that we had a little graph here, and uh, let's say that uh, let's draw an asymptote. So, okay, so let's say that line. I actually meant that one to be a different color, but that's okay. So let's say that that was um, that's the uh, asymptote. It's actually possible for uh, a function to perhaps look something like this to cross the asymptote and then approach it from above Th that is possible for uh, for a rational function to do so moving on to part two uh, says show all work in the space provided and for the first one here we're given this table and asked to determine the degree of the polynomial uh, and then find the equation relating x and y so you you look at the uh, differences, the first differences, second differences, etc. And remember when you do these, let me just grab my calculator here for a moment. Uh, you got to make sure that you're subtracting the y's in the correct order. And so, uh, for example, to find the difference between, and it goes in order from 19 down to 9, you would actually subtract the bottom number minus the top number. So there's a difference of negative 10, so from, and if you think about the way it goes, from 19 down to 9 is a difference of negative 10, it's going down 10. To get the next one we do 5 minus 9 which is negative 4, so it's going down 4. The sign of those, those uh, differences tells you whether it's going up or down. Uh, from 5 to 7 it's going up 2, 7 to 15 is going up 8, 15 to 29 is going up 14 because 29 minus 15 is positive 14. Now, these differences are not the same, so we know it's not linear. Uh, the next difference is from negative 10 to negative 4 has increased by 6. From negative 4 to 2, it's increased by 6, and they're all 6. is 2 to 8, 6 up. And same with 8 to 14 is also up 6. So as soon as the uh, um, second, uh, as soon as, uh, or any row of differences are the same, you stop. And so this is quadratic, or it's a second degree uh, polynomial. And so now we have to find the equation. So if we, so we now know it's uh, it's a polynomial. So I'm going to create over here the generic polynomial table, uh, sorry, uh, quadratic table. So the general formula for a quadratic is uh, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And so, uh, and I'm using the same x values from negative two to three here that I did in the table, just so everything matches up nicely. So for example, if I sub substitute negative 2 in place of x, so it's a times negative 2 squared plus b times the negative 2 plus c, and so negative 2 squared is 4, so that would be 4a at the beginning here. Negative 2 times b is minus 2b, and then plus c in the end. If I put negative 1 in place of x here and here, it would be a times negative 1 squared plus b times negative 1 plus c. Now negative 1 squared is 1, so that's why that's just a at the beginning. And then uh, negative 1 times b is minus b, and then plus c in the end. So, And the same all the way through. When we put 0 in, that term and that term both become 0, and that's why you just have the c next. And then 1, 2, and 3, same idea. Notice that these will be the same as these in a lot of cases, uh, well, where, wherever there's a square. Uh, and of course, for the bx, notice that they're just opposites. Now the idea <coughs> is to match up uh, expressions from over here with the numbers that they correspond to over here to find a and b and c. And so notice that c is the y value when x is 0. And so that, notice I've circled them, uh, or sort of an oval, blue oval here. So that's why c would equal this 5, because 5 is the, uh, the, well, the y-intercept, or the y value when x is 0. So c is 5. So now I know c, I have to find a and b. Um, on the end here, uh, actually, after you do, I guess I didn't talk about the differences. Um, so these are all the differences. So for example, 4a down to a has gone down 3a. From negative 2 to negative 
negative 2b to negative 1b has gone up b. And so uh, that's why it would be 3a plus b. Uh, from a up to uh, a minus b plus c up to c, uh, it's gone down a because we've subtracted an a. And we've added a b. And then uh, the, from c to c is no change. Uh, what it would look algebraically if you did those, actually maybe I'll do one right here. So the very first one, the negative 3a plus b. If I were to actually show that algebraically, this is what it would look like. So I would take the uh, a minus b plus c and subtract from it the uh, 4a minus 2b plus c. So that's the actual calculation. Now when you take the brackets off here, remember all these signs would change. So this would be a minus 4a and then this would become a plus 2b and then this would be a minus c. We'll get rid of the bracket in the end. And so a take away 4a is the negative 3a here. Negative b plus 2b would be a, a b and c minus c would be no c's. There's, so that's why there's no c there. So that's the actual calculation to show how to get these. And so you do all the differences uh, throughout. So, so now that we have those, so the difference between negative 3a plus b and negative a plus b would be 2a. So it's gone up 2a from negative 3a to negative 1a. And of course, the difference between b and b is nothing. From negative a to positive a has gone up 2a. From 1a to 3a has gone up 2a. From 3a to 5a has gone 2a. So notice that all these uh, differences on the end, the second differences, are all the same. So I can equate any one of these two a's here to any one of the sixes. I just chose the top one here and the top one here. So I said, well, let's let 2a equal 6. So divide out the 2 and you get 3. So now I know c is 5 and a is 3. I want to find what b is. b is the last constant. So I chose this one here, but I could have chosen any of these. So a plus b is the first difference between where x is 0 and 1. So I let that equal the 2 because 2 is the first difference between where x is 0 and 1. So it equates to the same place in the table. I could have let negative 3a plus b equal negative 10 and solved. I could have let negative a plus b equal the negative 4 or 5a plus b equals the 14, any of them. So, uh, so I let uh, a plus b equal the 2. And um, I, I already know that a is 3 from over here, so I can put 3 in here in place of a and solve to find b is negative 1. So filling in 3 for a, negative 1 for b, and 5 for c in ax squared plus bx plus c, then that's my equation. So y would equal 3x squared minus x plus 5. Okay. Okay, in uh, 1b here in the second part, uh, we're given uh, this table and we're asked to find uh, what degree it is and then also find the equation that relates x and y. And so we start finding the differences again. 12 minus uh, 20 be negative 8. Uh, 6 minus 12 is negative 6. Uh, 8 minus 6 is 2. 24 minus 8 is 16, etc. And so the first differences are all different, so we keep on going. Uh, negative 6 take away negative 8, same as negative 6 plus 8, which would be 2. Uh, 2 take away negative 6 is 8. 16 minus 2 is 14. And so we find the second differences are all different as well. And so uh, we keep on going. Uh, 8 minus 2 is 6. 14 minus 8 is 6. 20 minus 14 is 6. 26 minus 20 is 6. So that row or column of differences are all the same. So that's why we would say this is a third degree relation. And so now we need the generic table for the cubic function. So we'll call it uh, y equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. And I'll use the same x values, so I'll start by substituting negative 2 in. So negative 2 cubed is 8, negative 8, so that's why it's negative 8a. Negative 2 squared is 4, so 4 times b would be a 4b. Uh, negative 2 times c would be minus 2c and plus d in the end. And then this is what it looks like when you substitute negative 1 in and you get this. I did the 4 down here as well to get the, the 64a plus 16b plus 4c plus d in the end. And so we need the differences. And so negative a take away negative 8a is the same as negative a plus 8a, which is 7a. Uh, b minus 4b is negative 3b. And negative c uh, 
plus 2c would be when you subtract negative 2c would be a, a, a c here, a difference of c. Uh, these are all d's in the end, so in every case d minus d is 0, that's why there's no d's here at all. So the first differences are all different. Uh, we will go all through them. Uh, for example, 64a minus 27a is 37a, and 16b minus 9b is 7b, etc. So they're all different, so we go to the second row of differences. So a take away 7a would be negative 6a. Negative b take away negative 3b would be a 2b. And again, these are all c's, so in every case c minus c is 0. There's no c's on the end here at all. Um, a minus a is 0 a's. Uh, b take away negative b is 2b. Uh, 7a minus a is 6a, 3b minus b is 2b, etc. So do all the second differences, they're of course different, so you go to the third differences. Now in every case the 2b's are all the same, so in every case 2b minus 2b is 0, so that's why there's no b's here at all. Uh, 0a take away negative 6a would be 6a. 6a minus the 0a here would be a 6a. 12a minus 6a is 6a and 18a minus 12a is also 6a so of course these are all the same we would expect that because it's supposed to be a third degree relation and so we start uh, equating to find a and b and c and d and so I'm going to start with d here just like I did c in the uh, the, the previous one uh, d is the y-intercept it's the y value when x is 0 so that's why d would equal 6 so now we know d is 6 so now I'm going to identify a next um, on the end here, all these 6a's would be the same as the 6's. So I'm going to equate this one to this one, and it really doesn't matter. So this 6a would be equal to this 6 just as easily. And so we divide the 6 to get a is 1. Now I know uh, d and a, so I want to find b and c. Uh, you kind of uh, After you find the a, I kind of work backwards, and then one of these will allow me to find b, and once I know a and b, then one of these will allow me to find c as well. So I'm going to equate this one to this. Notice it's the second difference from the bottom. It's the second difference in the second differences from the bottom. So 12a plus 2b, 2b would equal 20. That's the nice thing about using exactly the same x values. So this spot would be the same as this spot. That spot right there would be the same as the 8. Okay. So 12a plus 2b up here would equal the 20. And I just found that a is 1, so 12 times 1, of course, is 12, so it's 12. And then so I subtract 12 from 20 to get 8, 2b equals 8, so b is 4. So now I know a is 1, b is 4, I can find c. So I, I equated this one to the 16. Again, it's the uh, third from the bottom first difference, so third from the bottom first difference. It's also the first difference between where x is 1 and 2, so if you had different x values, that's how you could still could locate it. So 7a plus 3b plus c equals 16. Um, so we know a is 1 and we found b is 4 a moment ago. So that's 12 and 7 is 19. And so subtracting 19 from 16 we get negative 3. So now we know all the constants. So in y equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, we put 1 in place of a, so that's why it's 1x cubed. b is 4, so b a 4x squared, c is negative 3, so that's why it's a minus 3x, and d is 6 in the end. So that's the equation that relates y and x in this table. Moving on to the next question, uh, the first of a couple sketches. You're asked to sketch the function f of x equals 5 over 2x minus 7, and to indicate all asymptotes and any intercepts there might be. So let's talk about asymptotes first, and then we'll get into intercepts. Uh, vertical asymptotes, first of all. So we set the 2x minus 7 to 0. That, uh, that gives you the value where the function is undefined. And so we solve and we get 7 halves, or 3 and a half. So that would be this vertical line right here. That's the vertical asymptote. And to, uh, uh, it says show how to get each behavior, so that's a calculation. Uh, so if that's where x is 3.5, then I want to take a number very slightly to the left of 3.5 and very slightly to the right of 3.5 to figure out what's the y value. Is it a really large positive number or is it a really large negative number? So that's what I'm thinking or I'm looking for. So uh, i actually just plugging in the 3.499. That's the number very slightly to the left of the dotted line in here. And it works out to negative 2,500. So that means that if I'm putting an x value just barely to the left of that, the y value is a huge negative way down here. So that's what tells me the graph is going down. 
immediately to the right or very slightly to the right of where x is three and a half the function value works out to be positive 2500 so that means as you come from this side over here uh, and get an x value very slightly above three and a half the y value is a huge positive so it goes up really really high now the horizontal asymptote is y equals zero because you just have a constant on top over a linear function so as x becomes large five over bigger and bigger and bigger numbers tends towards zero and so that's why y equals zero is the horizontal asymptote and so to figure out the how it behaves to the far right and the far left we substitute really large numbers a large negative a large positive so I'm using negative a thousand and positive a thousand in place of x so I would put negative a thousand there and do five divided by two times negative a thousand minus seven and so that works out to negative point zero zero two four nine etc so notice it's quite close to zero but it is negative and so this would be to the far left, negative 1,000. So that means that coming in this direction, I'm approaching zero, but I'm staying below. It kind of looks like that touches. It's not intended to look like it's touching the y x-axis. And then we also substitute a large positive number in place of x. So uh, 2 times 1,000, I, I put 1,000 in place of x, and it works out to point zero zero two five. So very close to zero, but positive. So that tells me as we come down here and go to the far right, it's staying above zero, so it's going in that direction. It's approach, approaching the, the horizontal asymptote from above. The intercepts, well, let's find the y-intercept, so we put zero in place of x, so with zero here and zero here, and that works out to negative five seven, so a little bit above negative one. So that's the, it's, that's where, that's the negative five sevenths here. There is no y-intercept because y equals zero is the horizontal asymptote. So if, um, um, y equals zero or the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote um, then it's not going to be uh, touching that just getting close to from above or below this is not one of those cases where it might cross it and then come back up so that's pretty much what number two would look like in question number three here in the second part we're asked to graph another rational function uh, 4x squared over x minus 4 times x plus 5 two different linear factors in the denominator so there would be two different vertical asymptotes so 4 would be the number that would make this 0 and negative 5 would be what makes this 0 so the vertical asymptotes would be x equals 4 and x equals negative 5 and so and notice I've changed the scale from the previous question um, I need a little bit more horizontal room here so I've gone out past 20 and negative 20 to the right and left I left the vertical scale the same so uh, it still goes um, for the standard every block is one and so x equals 4 here 4 would be right here x equals negative 5 would be this line uh, all I changed in my scale is every block on the x-axis is 2 so that's the only difference and so uh, let's investigate around this uh, vertical asymptote first. That's where x equals 4. So take a number a little bit below 4, like 3.999, and notice you get negative a little below negative 7,000. And so when you're approaching that from the left side, the function's going way down. Uh, a little bit to the right of uh, 4 would be like, for example, 4.001. And so it goes up a bigger than positive 7,000 so from this side it's going way up as you approach that vertical asymptote from the right side from above now let's do the left one the negative 5 one so a little bit below negative 5 uh, it's past 11,000 so from below means to the left so on this side we're going way up and if we take a number slightly to the right of negative 5 like negative 4.999 uh, it's below negative 11,000 so in this direction coming from the right side is going way way down the horizontal asymptote, uh, if we take a look at the dominant term, so there's only one term in the numerator, 4x squared. In the denominator, if we multiply x by x, that gives you x squared. And those two uh, terms are of the same degree, so the x squareds divide out and we get 4. So y equals 4 would be the horizontal asymptote. So substitute a large positive and a large negative into the function and see you know, how it compares to 4. So when I did 1,000, I put 1,000 in place of x here, here, and here. I get 3.996. Now, notice that the function was going up here. Okay, so it's approaching the vertical asymptote from that side. So, in most cases, you would expect it to stay above the horizontal asymptote. But this is one of the cases where it must cross, and I'll show you where to, how to find that point. And then it actually is below and starts coming up again and gets close to the uh, 4, but never should touch it again. Uh, I'll show you how to find that point in a moment. 
To the far left, if we put a number like negative 1,000 in place of x, it stays above 4. So the, the normal thing does happen over here, and it stays above the horizontal asymptote to the far left. Now, to find out it actually where it crosses, it actually crosses at 20 here. We would set the function equal to 4. So that's this calculation down here. I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. There we go. So we set the function equal to 4, and I expanded out the denominator, so that expands out to x squared plus x minus 20. So if we do a little cross multiplying, the 4x squared here, which is this 4x squared, uh, would equal 4 times this. So 4 times that would be 4x squared plus 4x minus 80. Uh, the 4x squared uh, cancel out because there's 1 on either side of the equation. And so we would solve, we would have 0 equals 4x minus 80. So if I brought the 80 over, I would have 4x equals 80. And dividing out the 4, we get 20. So 20 must be the place where it actually touches or crosses the uh, horizontal asymptote. Uh, and then it, it's, it, there must be a local minimum here somewhere because then it starts going up again. Now, um, intercepts. So the... Um, we find the uh, y-intercept by putting 0 in place of x, and that's this calculation right down here. So f of 0 is 0, so when f of 0 is 0, the x-intercepts and y-intercepts are both 0. So the, the, the point zero zero is in the graph. So noticing that the graph went down here and down here, what happens is it must come up and then touch at 0, 0, and then start going down again. So those two points, uh, the, those two places do connect. And so that's pretty much what the uh, graph would look like for number three. Number four down here is the first of a couple of algebraic uh, solving, uh, algebraic uh, rational equations. And so we've got x plus three over eight equals two x. And so I would multiply both sides by eight because there's a the denominator of eight here. So those eights divide out and I'm left with x plus three on the left. And two x times eight is 16 x on, uh, on the right side. So bringing the x over here, or subtracting x from both sides, so we get 15x equals 3. Dividing by 15, we get 1 fifth. 3 fifteenths re reduces to 1 fifth. So that's the solution for 4a. For 4b, uh, we have a, a little bigger denominator than just 8 here. So the common denominator would be 2 times x minus 1 times x plus 2. It has to include all the factors. And so we multiply both sides by 2x minus 1, x plus 2 on both sides. And so on the left here, the x plus 2s would divide out. And so left with negative 5 times 2 is negative 10 times this factor. On the right side, the 2s divide out, and so do the x minus 1. So I'm left with 9 times the x plus 2 factor. So uh, distributing the negative 10 in, we get this. And the 9 in over here, we get this. Uh, and then do a little rearranging. Negative tax brought over would be a plus 10x to add to the 9x to get uh, 19x. 18 comes over here and subtracts from the 10 to give you negative 8. And so dividing out the 19, we get x is negative 8 nineteenths. For C, um, there's actually denominators here, here, and here, but there's a lot in common. So the common denominator would be x times x minus 2. So, so if it's x times x minus 2, it has this factor and also has this factor. So I multiply all three of these by x, x minus 2. And so the first one here on the left, the x's divide out and so do the x minus 2's, leaving us with just 10. When we multiply this by x, x minus 2, the x's divide out and we're left with 4 times the x minus 2, which would be 4x minus 8. On the right side, when we multiply x times x minus 2, the x minus 2's divide out and it's just 5 times x, which gives us the 5x here. So if I bring the x over and subtract it from the 5x, they'll give me just a 1x on the right side here, and 10 minus 8 is 2. So x would equal 2, or so it seems. If you look back into the original function, and I didn't mention this in b up here, but let's finish c first. The restrictions would be x could not equal 0 from here and here, and 2 from this one and this one. But we got 2 for a solution. You see, this solution comes from an equation that we got from manipulating this. And so in uh, summary, since uh, x equals 2 is a restriction, then there would be no solution for this equation at all. Moving on to uh, question number 5, we're asked to solve this uh, uh, rational inequality algebraically and then illustrate the solution on a number line. And so we note that the restrictions would be at negative 3 and negative 1. Those are the two uh, values for x that would make the two denominators 0, so hence the rational expression is undefined.
And so since negative 3 and negative 1 are the two restrictions, negative 3 is here, negative 1 is here. So we would have three cases. We would have x is less than negative 3, and then x is from negative 3 to negative 1, and then x is above negative 1. So those are the three cases we will consider here. So first of all, when x is less than negative 3, so in order to solve this uh, rational inequality, the two denominators are x plus 1 and x plus 3, so we would multiply both sides by x plus 1 times x plus 3. Now, below negative 3, so think of a number below negative 3, like negative 5, for example. If you put negative 5 in this, it's negative. And negative 5 in this, it's also negative. So the product of two negatives would be a positive. Now, the reason this negative thing is important is when you're multiplying by a negative or a positive, it can change or not change that direction of that inequality. The algebra stays the same, but the inequality is what's important here. Now, since both of these are negative, a negative times a negative is a positive. So essentially, when you multiply here, you're multiplying both sides by a positive. I suppose you could think of it as that's negative, so this is going to change sign. It will become a greater than. And then that's negative again, so it changes back to less than or equal to. Okay, so you could do that, I suppose. That would be the same thing. So uh, we're not changing the direction of the inequality. So over here, the x plus 1s divide out, and we're left with x plus 3 times x plus 4. Over here, the x plus 3s divide out, and we're left with x times x plus 1. So on the left here, this, uh, these two binomials, trinomials, uh, binomials, sorry, multiply to this trinomial to give you x squared plus 7x plus 12, and x times x plus 1 is x squared plus x. The two x squares uh, um, cancel out of two, both sides, or if we subtract x squared from both sides, they're, they're gone. So we would have 7x plus 12 is less than or equal to x. So I brought the 12 over, it's negative. I subtracted x from both sides, that's why this becomes 6x. Dividing out the 6, now we're dividing by a positive, so the inequality stays in the same direction. We get x is less than or equal to negative 2. And so, uh, the less than or equal to negative 2 is this part right here. So, less than or equal to negative 2 and the case, where do they overlap? That's what we're looking for, really. And so, less than or equal to negative 2 and less than negative 3 would overlap on x is less than negative 3. This red part here that's illustrated is what that and that have in common, where they overlap. So we have a solution here from the first case that x should be less than negative 3. Just less than, you see, that point actually isn't included here because negative 3 is a restriction. That's why there's an open circle here. This is less than or equal to negative 2, which would include that negative 2, although where they overlap is just ne below negative 3. The second case uh, between negative 3 and negative 1, notice two open circles here because, again, I can't include negative 3 or negative 1 because they're the values that make the rational expressions undefined. Between negative 3 and negative 1, okay, the algebra part's the same. We're still multiplying by x plus 1 times x plus 3. But, again, look at the signs of the two factors. Uh, pick a number between negative 3 and negative 1, like, for example, negative 2. If I put negative 2 in place of x, Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So that factor is going to be negative. So I'm multiplying by a negative. This factor has turned to be positive because above negative 3 at, for example, negative 2, negative 2 plus 3 is positive 1. So that factor is positive. So I, and when I multiply by these two binomials, one's negative and one's positive, so that inequality will change sign. The less than or equal to will become greater than or equal to. Now, the algebra is the same. The only difference here uh, from this one, instead of x is less than or equal to negative 2, it will be x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So greater than or equal to negative 2 is from negative 2 included to the right. So where does that overlap with the case? It overlaps right here. It would include this point right here, the negative 2, up to but below negative 1, Okay, because that negative 1 is uh, not included in the case. And so we have another part of a solution. Third case is where x is greater than negative 1. And if x is greater than negative 1, so think of a number bigger than negative 1, like for example 0. Okay? 0 plus 1 is 1, that's positive, and 0 plus 3 is 3, so that's also positive. So when we multiply by x plus 1 times x plus 3, we multiply by a positive again, so just like the first case. And uh, the algebra stays exactly the same. If that does not change, we get x is less than or equal to negative 2. So this is the case. x is greater than negative 1, and the algebraic solution here is uh, negative 2 and below. And notice that there's no overlap between those, so we do not add to our solution at all. 
So the whole solution here would be this part from the first case and this little bit from the second. So we would state algebraic the solution as x is less than negative 3 and then from negative 2 inclusive up to but less than negative 1. So that would be the algebraic solution on this and that's what it looks like the number line. And last question over here. Uh, number 6. Why does the graph of f of x equals 5 over x minus 1 squared go upwards on both sides of the vertical asymptote? So the vertical asymptote is here at 1, right here. So notice this one actually goes up on the left and up on the right. But the graph of, uh, I called it g of x, 5 over x minus 1. So no, notice there's no square, otherwise it's the same function. Uh, it goes down on the left and up on the right. So why the difference? And the difference is actually all in the square. If you, if you analyze the behaviors of the two of these, so for this one here, the vertical asymptote is where x equals 1. So if you take a number a little bit below 1, above 1, uh, both those function values uh, approach and it's 500 million um, because of the fact that we're squaring that very small number in the denominator. And so they both go towards positive infinity. They both go up because of the square. You see this one over here, if there's no square, then this one ends up being negative. So we have 5 divided by a very small negative, and that's why that one goes to negative 50,000 here. But this one, that part in the denominator would be positive, so that's why it goes up. So the difference is in the square. Uh, when you have that factor that's approaching 0 and it's being squared, um, then it's going to stay positive. But if you don't have the square, it has the opportunity to, uh, to become negative if what's in the brackets there is negative. So, so the difference is in the square. And that's the end of the tutorial.